The Australian fritillary butterfly was once present in the coastal regions of South East Queensland. However, there has not been a sighting since 2001. Characterised by its distinct black markings and laced appearance, these butterflies have declined in numbers due to its habitat loss when swamps are drained for farming and urbanisation. The New Holland Mouse, also known as Pukilla, is a species of rodent that was named by George Waterhouse in 1834. In 2021, it was listed as a vulnerable species due to their decline in numbers. This decline has been largely due to the destruction of their habitat for land development. The dusky hopping mouse, a desert dwelling mouse, was presumed extinct in New South Wales from 1845. Like its name suggests, this mouse hops and lives communally in burrows. They are nocturnal and don't need to drink water as their moisture comes from their food. Threats to this species include habitat loss due to livestock and feral cats which watch the burrows and can consume several mice in one night. In 1839, John Gould, during a French expedition, discovered the Gouldian finch. He was so impressed by the bird's plumage that he named it the Lady Gouldian after his late wife. Sparsely distributed across northern Australia between the Kimberley and north central Queensland, the Gouldian finch was historically observed in flocks of thousands. Sadly, its total population now is estimated less than 2,500 due to fires and grazing practices. The helmeted honey eater, the bird emblem from the state of Victoria, Australia, is critically endangered. Following European settlement, the majority of the bird's natural habitat was demolished. The shrub layer in which they nest was largely removed. Many canopy trees in which they forage were cleared and swamps were drained for agriculture. The species contracted to just one population of 50 birds, but today has grown to 200. In the second half of the 20th century, Australian deserts were home to not one, but two different types of bilbies, one called the greater bilby and the second, the lesser bilby. Henley Finlayson, a scientist, collected the last known live species of the lesser bilby in the 1930s. Fast forward to today, the lesser bilby is thought to be extinct and the greater bilby population is estimated to be less than 10,000, killing to a survival in mostly remote and isolated colonies in arid Australia. The three main threats are competition for food from livestock, introduced species by English colonists such as rabbits and predation by foxes and feral cats. The imperial hair streak butterfly have a mutual relationship with some insects. The caterpillar provides sugar for the ants and the ants protect the caterpillar from predators. These endangered butterflies usually fly close to the ground and breed in open eucalypt forests and woodland with acacia. Drainage of swamps for farming purposes, pesticides and the weeds that cover remaining swamps smother the native violets that they lay their eggs on. The smoky mouse is a small native rodent native to mainland southeastern Australia. In 1934, it was listed as a critically endangered species with a record of 100 wild mice in its tiny populations in the Central Highlands and East Gippsland in Victoria and State Forest in New South Wales. While they are vulnerable to foxes and feral cats, the biggest threat to the species has been the loss of habitat. The British colonists were much impressed with marsupials called bandicoots when they landed in Australia as they believed that they looked ridiculous due to their long snouts. They nicknamed them the zebra rat because of its black striped rump. While commonly known as the western barred bandicoot, these creatures were not prepared for the colonial era transformation of its ecosystem. There was an onslaught of important British animals from cattle and rabbits that damaged the delicate vegetation due to the ravenous house rats that soon developed a taste for bandicoots. Known as the splendid wren or blue wren, this particular bird in Aboriginal culture is a totem representing the connection to family and land. The dreamtime story about the blue fairy wren reminds us that while we're all connected, we each have our own unique identity and purpose. In Aboriginal society, dingoes played an important role in the protection and the mobility of women. The pups grew up in the community as a human companion and helped them hunt. 
However, when the British began colonising Australia in 1788, they soon began to think of dingoes as a problem. Dingoes attacked the sheep that the British people brought with them, so the settlers shot, trapped and later poisoned these species. However, without dingoes in the ecosystem, small, vulnerable species have a high predation rate from feral cats and foxes. Without dingoes, there becomes a higher kangaroo population. The kangaroos destroy the vegetation with overgrazing, which native wildlife needs to hide from feral predators. The dingo is the only Australian mammal not protected under the National Parks and Wildlife Act. A top order predator, dingoes are persecuted for similar reasons to the extinct Tasmanian tiger. John Price was the first European to record koalas. In 1798, recorded his journey into the Blue Mountains, where he first encountered these animals. Subsequently, it was discovered that the koala was not a bear at all, but a member of a group of animals called marsupials that give birth to their young and carry them in their pouch. As the new colony progressed, the clearing of forests for farmland began, and with it, the beginning of the loss of habitat. European settlers identified the koala as a source of fur to trade, and the following years until the 1930s, millions of koalas were shot for their pelts. They announced a six-month open season where one million koalas were killed for trade. While new laws in the 1930s classified koalas as a protected species, today no such laws have been introduced to protect gum trees for which koalas rely on for their food. The Bagong moth is an iconic and well-known Australian insect that has a remarkable nocturnal navigator. Its name is derived from the Aboriginal word bagung, describing the colour brown. Like monarch butterflies in North America, bagong moths make a yearly migration over enormous distances. According to experts, the decline in bagong moth numbers is a lack of rainfall due to the winter drought and the effects of climate change affecting their breeding grounds.